The controller, also called the timer or clock, is essentially the brains of your system. Usually located in the garage, it stores the watering schedule in its memory and opens the valves as dictated by its program. Your irrigation system has been supplied with Rainbird's EC controller. When the timer was installed, it was programmed to meet the existing needs of your landscape, but these requirements may change. You'll find detailed programming instructions in the operating manual that came with your controller. If you still have questions, please call your Rainbird irrigation professional. One of the most common reasons to adjust a controller's program is a change in season. For instance, as autumn becomes winter, your landscape will require less water. The EC controller simplifies these adjustments with a feature called water budget. First, turn the dial to the water budget position. The number 100 appears in the display. This means that all stations will water for 100% of their programmed watering times. Now, if the weather is cooling down and you want to cut back on watering times, say by 10%, simply press the minus key once. The watering times of all stations move from 100% down to 90%. This 10% reduction means a 10-minute station now runs for 9 minutes, a 20-minute station runs for 18 minutes, and so on. Water budget lets you adjust the run times up or down from 10% to 200%. This little percent sign indicates your EC controller has been adjusted to a water budget setting other than 100%. Keep in mind that changing the water budget percentage affects all stations on all three programs. When you're finished, turn the dial back to auto and the controller will resume operation. For daylight savings, you'll want to know how to adjust the clock's time. First, turn the dial to the date time position. The flashing digits in the display show which numbers are ready to be adjusted. Use the plus and minus buttons to increase or decrease the flashing item. Push the enter button to advance the display to the next item available for adjustment. So, to adjust the time, press the enter button, bypassing the year, month, and day settings, and stop when the hour number is flashing. Then, press the plus button once to add an hour, or the minus button to lose an hour. If you press enter one more time, the minutes can be adjusted. Or just return the dial to auto and the controller will resume its schedule. During exceptionally dry weather, you may wish to run a program more often than was originally scheduled. Instead of reprogramming, you can start the program manually. Turn the dial to manual cycle. The A for program A will appear in the display. Use the ABC button to select the program you want to run. Then press Enter. The program, station number, and station run time will be displayed as the manual cycle turns on each station for its programmed amount of watering. At this point, simply turn the dial to Auto. The controller will finish the manual cycle and return to automatic operation. If you want to prevent your system from watering, for example during the rainy season, or to do some repair work, just turn the dial to the off setting. There's a delay of about three seconds, and then the system will stop operating. In this position, the controller will continue to keep the correct time, it just won't open the valves, and all your program schedules will be retained until you're ready to resume watering. But remember, the controller will not water again until you turn the dial back to the auto position. In case of a power outage, the EC controller has a battery backup which retains the time, date, and programming information. To ensure an uninterrupted power supply, replace the 9-volt alkaline battery every year. Your EC controller is a multi-program timer that can be very flexible. If you have any further questions, consult the manual for details or call your Rainbird professional. Welcome to your first Rainbird Clock. You have purchased the E-Series. First we'll cover on how to change the date and time in case they're incorrect. 
Turn the dial to the date time button. You'll notice the year flashes. Adjust the year by using the plus and minus keys until you have the correct year. Once it's selected, press enter or the arrow key. Now we start with the month. Use the up and down arrow keys until the correct month is selected. You can go forwards or backwards. Press enter to move on to the day. Again, adjust the day by pressing the up and down arrow keys until the proper day is selected. Once it is, press the enter key. Next, we'll do the hour of day. Be careful to note if it's AM or PM. Use the up and down arrow keys to reach the proper time. When you're finished, press the enter key. Adjust the minutes using the up and down arrow keys. When you're finished, press enter and you should be back to the year. Now you've adjusted the time. Next we're going to tackle the day cycle. Most homes are automatically set up with a seven day cycle. That means Sunday through Saturday. If it's not on seven, you may use the up and down arrow keys until you find the number seven. You'll see a number of other options, but what you want typically is seven. Next, turn the dial to the water days. You'll see uh, numbers one through seven. Each number represents a day of the week. A number with a box around it means that the water will run that day if it has a start time and minutes on its own that runs. Number one is blinking right now. If we did not want the first day to turn on, press the minus key and you'll notice the box disappears. Now on the first day it will no longer water. If you don't know which day is which, it always displays the current day. Today is 4 or Thursday. So you can backtrack from 4 to count back Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So 1 is Monday. Press the enter key to scroll through the days of the week. So if you wanted today off, which is Thursday, and it's flashing, press the plus or minus key to turn it off. If you made an error and you actually do want it to run, press the key again, and now it will run on that day again. You can do this for any day of the week that you would like to run or have off. Next we'll go to our program start times. Turn the dial to the right, and you'll see the first start time come up. The E-series clock has multiple start times. The first one we'll deal with, you typically want to be the earliest in the day. Probably before everyone gets up and uses their showers or consult with your landscaper to see what they recommend for your grass or shrubs. Use the plus and minus keys to change the time, again noting the AM and PM difference. Press the enter key if you have the first time set where you want it. The second start time has not been programmed. Right now it is blank. If you did want to add a second start time, use the plus or minus keys to change to a time that's suitable for you. For this test we'll go with 11.15 p.m. Then we'll press the enter key because that's where we want it. The third one we don't need. Press enter again and then enter again. We'll come all the way back to the first start time. Now let's assume we want to turn off the start time. Press the enter key to move on to start time number two. To turn off a start time, you want to get the clock to where it has all the dashes or just near 12 midnight. Press the up or down key whichever way is closest to get to 12 midnight. Once the numbers disappear and it begins to flash again, the second start time is no longer functioning. Now you only have the one start time early in the morning. Next we'll move on to station run time. Start by turning the dial towards station run time. Your first run time for zone 1 is set for 10 minutes. If that was either insufficient or too much, you can change the amount of minutes on a minute to minute scale by using the plus and minus keys. We've changed it to 9 minutes because we thought 10 was a little bit too much. To check the next zone, use the enter key. 
and we see that zone 2 is also set at 10 minutes. Say if we wanted to move that up to 15 due to high temperatures, we could use the plus key, and now it's set to 15. Use the enter key to move on to the next zone. If you do not want the third zone to run, or any other zone for that matter, you can remove all the minutes and bring it down to zero. A zone with zero minutes will not run. The next process we want to cover is the water budget. Turn your dial to the water budget, which is all the way at the bottom. Right now, your clock is set to 100%. 100% means 100% of the run times will be used. You can either increase or decrease from 100% by using the plus and minus keys. Ninety percent would mean that ninety percent of the run times would be used. For example, a ten minute zone would only run for nine minutes instead. For our purposes, we're going to leave it at hundred percent. Next thing we want to cover is how to run manually a single station. Turn the dial to the manual stations and then use the arrow key to to select and enter in the zone that you wanted. Let's say we wanted zone 4. Enter in the number of minutes you would like zone 4 to run. We've selected 4 minutes. In order to make it run, press the enter key once and then turn the dial to auto. Zone 4 will run for approximately 4 minutes and then shut off and resume normal programming. This is a one-time run only. It will not interfere with normal programming. If you wish to interrupt it early, turn the dial to off for approximately five seconds. Then we can run a different manual station if we wanted to. For example, if your shrubs needed extra water or one area of your grass in particular was a little drier than the others. Next thing we want to show you is how to run a manual cycle. Say if your entire lawn needed extra water and you wanted to run it one extra time. Turn to manual cycle, press the enter key, and it will begin. Then turn your dial back to auto. The entire cycle will run beginning with zone 1 and moving on until there's no zones left or no zones with minutes on them. If you wish to skip a zone at this time, you may press the enter key and it will jump to the next station. Now we're on zone 2 and if you want to interrupt it early turn it to off for approximately 5 seconds. The last thing we'd like to show you is how to run a test. A test will run all the valves that have time on them. This is the number of minutes that each zone will run in case you want to check them or just put a little bit of water down in each area. Change the number of minutes to something you would prefer, say it's three, then press enter and turn the dial to auto. Each zone that's set up will run for three minutes and then shut down. This will not interfere with normal programming. Once the all zones are done, it will resume normal programming and begin its next start time. If you wish to interrupt it early, turn the dial to off for approximately five seconds. Off is the only position that will cease all programming. If you leave it on off, the controller will not run and your sprinklers will not turn on until you have resumed normal programming by turning the dial to auto. Normally you'll leave your dial on auto at all times unless heavy rains or some other event occurs in which you want to turn them off. Thank you.